If you have your Bibles, won't you take a copy of God's Word? Turn with me, if you will, to Romans chapter 13. And we're going to begin reading in the very first verse of that chapter as we continue our Roman series this morning. And if you've got to Romans 13, verse 1, let me hear you say amen. amen. Here's what God's Word tells us. Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power resisteth the ordinance of God, and they uh, that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God. A revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Verse 5. Wherefore, ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. For this cause pay ye tribute also. For they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to him, uh, tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Church, I'm going to ask will you just uh, bow your heads in a moment of prayer as we ask God to be with us this morning. Father, uh, thank you for uh, the honor of being able to stand before your people and share your word. Father, I'm thankful for the songs that have been sung. I'm thankful for the friendly greetings uh, that have taken place as we've come together. But this morning, Father, I pray that as we go through your words, and, and maybe it's, 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 it's not difficult for other people to encounter some things that you direct us to do. Father, this morning, I, I, for, for, for these texts, I guess sometimes I find it to be a struggle. I pray that uh, you help us. Uh, see the world through your eyes. Father, help us see the world through uh, a biblical lens and show us areas of our lives where we need to improve. Let us not be um, high-minded when it comes to your instruction. Let us not search for uh, considerations or exceptions or ways that we can try to dance around a topic. But Father, instead, let us attack this head-on, doing so with a meek spirit and Father, I pray you just speak to us and guide us how we should go. And it's in the name of Jesus I pray these things. Amen. The title of the message this morning is pretty straightforward. I don't like it, but the Bible declares it. I'll say it one more time. I don't like it, but the Bible declares it. Um, can I get anyone to agree with me this morning that there are things that the Bible says that I should do and I don't particularly like to do from a carnal perspective? Well, maybe. maybe we have some super spiritual people in here this morning. Would you agree that the Bible prohibits some things? That is easy to let our mind wander to or let our flesh crave and, 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 and they seem uh, pleasant to do, yet the Bible says don't do those things. Is that sometimes difficult? Of course it is. I'm being rhetorical. Uh, you see, the more I read God's Word, the more I realize that I have so much more room for obedience. And see that, I don't know, I guess when I became a, a new Christian, I, I, I saw that opposite. And when I interact with seasoned Christians, sometimes I see that opposite. Because there, there comes a point in someone's life where they realize, wow, uh, I can quote Scripture. I, I can outline the Bible with no problem. I can, I can even tell you from the beginning of Genesis to the conclusion of Revelation, uh, I, I can expound on every single chapter. I can't do this, but uh, I'm, I'm sure there are some, even in this room, who might be able to. But the more I read God's Word, the more I realize I have a lot more growth that needs to take place. I have a lot more room for obedience. Now this morning, uh, God's Word has called our attention uh, to the relationship, your relationship, my relationship, we have with what Paul calls higher powers. 
And I'm going to tell you, uh, I, I read this in the King James Version. I read this through a few other versions. I tried to, I pulled out the Greek lexicon and tried to figure out uh, exactly what is higher powers. Because after all, there are some preachers I know or love. Uh, when I've listened to their messages, I've gone back to look at the meanings of things and they were just a little bit off the mark. It happens to everybody. I'm sure it's happened to me. And if it hasn't already, it's going to. But when you look at, when, when you do a little research into what those higher powers are, uh, you could easily glaze over it and think that it's referring to a spiritual higher power. Um, however, that doesn't make much sense in the context of what Paul writes throughout the chapter. And when you look at this and what it means in the original uh, language, uh, it says, or higher powers refers to an authority to rule, to jurisdiction, to the sphere of authority for civil authorities. And when you look at what this, and, and, and you look through several places to try to determine what it is, unless you speak and write Greek, um, you have to use those resources, and it all comes back to the same thing. If you look to what this text is referring to, it's talking about human officials, members of government, not spiritual authorities. And I will support that statement with the text here in just a few minutes, but look, during this series, the entire series, we started in the first chapter of Romans. And we've seen through the writings of Paul, who under the direction of the Holy Spirit wrote this. And, and, and what has he addressed? He's addressed you and, and me. He's addressed everyone. Uh, uh, the fact uh, that uh, there is sinfulness inherently given to us. And then after that, that we commit on our own. However, redemption is possible through the Lord Jesus Christ who reconciles the believer to God the Father. Therefore, because of the blood of Christ, you can stand righteous before God. Now, I would love to stop right there. And I would love to say that's what this series, that's what Romans, the book of Romans, is all about. Because that's the beautiful portion. That's the one we all love. But the series is also, the book of Romans is also addressed the need for you and the need for me to repent of how crucial it is to heed, uh, heed God's instruction to strive towards unity among the body of Christ and to show love towards all people. And those are the things where it requires us to do more than what we're doing now. It requires us to grow. It requires us to rely more upon Christ because we can't do it ourselves. But then we get to chapter 13, which we read the first seven verses of this morning. And it addresses the civil, uh, or excuse me, the Christian's relationship with civil authority. With, with those who are supposed to be civil, civil servants, some people say who are leaders uh, in our government. And look, I don't necessarily like it, but the Bible declares it. Amen. I just want to go through a few things here with you this morning. I'm going to read the first two verses one more time. Romans chapter 13, verse 1. It says, Let every soul be subject to higher powers, civil authorities. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God. And they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. Here's the first thing that God's Word tells you this morning, tells me this morning, that is, we are, you are, I am, we are supposed to be subject to authority. Now look, I can try to over-spiritualize this like so many commentators do. I could try to dress it up with some kind of personal story like so many preachers do. But, but the fact of the matter is, uh, there's no dancing around this one. There's no, way to, there's no way to maneuver around what God's Word is telling us specifically to do. God's Word is telling the follower of Jesus Christ, if you say this morning I'm a Bible-believing Christian, if you say this morning that I am a follower of Jesus Christ, He's not only my Savior, but He's my Lord, then that means it's addressing you. And what it's saying is that you and I, as followers of Jesus, should be upstanding citizens. And we should do our best. To, to be an upstanding citizen, that means that we should do our best to ensure civil stability. I'm going to say that again. As a Christian, we should do our best to ensure civil stability. 
And how do you do that? Well, you don't make it a habit to rebel against authority. And why not? Well, the text tells us that the people who are in power, whether we like them personally or not, God has provided a way for them to possess such power. We can talk about crooked elections. I'm sure there's a lot of people who have opinions about that. And we can talk about the fact that uh, the deeds of the people, of the civil servants within our government, how they don't line up with the Bible. We can talk about the bad things that men and women do when they get power. We can say that somebody else should be in office or that the person in office should be there longer. But the fact of the matter is this. The authority has been granted to the people in power by God. It has been permitted by God. Now you might think just for a moment, because like I said, I, uh, I wrestled with this so much, I ended up preaching on Psalm 111 last week. That's how much I wasn't at peace with what I'm going to share with you this morning. You might think, and, and, and maybe it's just me, you know, Paul may have slipped in a little opinion here. Maybe, maybe the folks that sat down and was determined the, uh, the canon of Scripture, uh, maybe they, they messed up and they weren't allowing the Holy Spirit to lead. Maybe, maybe they accidentally included this opinion into Romans chapter 13 that was purely Paul's position and not one of God. And I'm being sarcastic, of course, but, but let me tell you how I know what Paul says here is valid. Because I've come to realize, the more I study God's Word, that if God declares something and tells you and I as followers of Jesus to do something, He doesn't just include it in one place. It's been corroborated somewhere else. The Holy Spirit has moved upon another writer to declare what it is that you and I should do. In the Old Testament, we see God, or we see a constant pointing to God as the supreme authority over government. So no matter what leader is in power, no matter what person possesses the ability to write legislation, whatever it is that they do, God still has authority over them. Taking consideration the book of Daniel chapter 4 verse 17, when God's word tells us, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will. Did you catch that? God gives it to whomsoever he chooses. And it setteth up over the basis of men. This tells us that God is the overseer of overseers. He's the one that points and selects and grants the ability for things to happen for people to go into positions of power. He has control over kingdoms, or more modernly we would say over nations even to go so far as to choose the specific ruler over them. So you can't say this morning that you are a Bible-believing Christian and you have nothing for the government. No respect for it, no honor for it. You can't do it. It's a direct contradiction of God's Word. Now there are going to be some folks, we even talked about it in Sunday school this morning, there's going to be some folks who are going to be cute. Maybe not cute, maybe it's a real, maybe it's a real, uh, a real objection to what I'm saying. There's going to be some people who say, well, what about the book of Exodus, which we went through this morning. In Exodus 1, verse 17, it said, But the midwives feared God and did not as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the men children alive. Or maybe Acts chapter 5, verse 29, where God's word says, Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. Amen and amen. If you are specifically led by God and it has something specifically to do with Jesus Christ, if it has something specifically to do with God, yeah, yeah, you got me. But I'm going to say this. I would be willing to guarantee that a majority of the gripes that you have with government has nothing to do with a leader who is trying to save his position by killing off the babies, nor does it have to do with anything about suppressing your ability to preach or teach in the name of Jesus Christ. Because those two examples were just that. Our personal gripes, at least mine and the, the, the gripes I hear people talk about, has nothing to do with godly things. We just don't like the way things are going. We don't particularly like the people who get elected to office. And I don't care what party they are. 
I wanted to start this off by saying I think God's a Democrat. And I know how to get right. Special meeting immediately, Brother Ray. But I was saying this is a joke. God. <laughs> Thanks, Brother Ray. But here's what we have to realize according to Romans chapter 13. Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, any other party that you want to put in there, it doesn't matter because God has allowed them to be in the position they're in. Now, the mechanism in which God uses that in our country is beautiful because we're a part of a democratic republic where God can move upon His people individually to go out and vote. You know what that means? When God sets up a king or a ruler, He uses His people to put them in there. So if you want to be, and this is not a, this is not, I'm, 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 this is not a political uh, 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 this is not a political uh, sermon. What I'm saying to you is, if you want to be a part of the process, stop griping about the process. B- do something with the ability that God has endowed you with to put those leaders in position. And that's for us to vote. Not gripe on Facebook. Not gripe to one another. But to actually participate. Now look. Your personal, my personal political beliefs or lack of trust in our government is not the same as the examples in using an exodus with Moses or with Peter in the book of Acts. This text this morning in Romans chapter 13 is clearly stating that you are obeying God by being subject to civil authorities. Look, and I'm living in the same America that you guys are, okay? I'm in the exact same place where the government is actively and seems to be doing it more, sanctioning abominations. Okay? I live in the same place where it seems like our people in power are intentionally wrecking economies. I understand that they're taking tax dollars and spending it on on pet projects while people are dying in the streets from lack of medicine, lack of food, or lack of shelter. I live in the same America that you do. I understand that we live in a place where it's safer for you to be a Muslim than it is to be a Christian. And I stand by that wholeheartedly. You want to know why? Because if you declare that you're a follower of Jesus Christ in this country today, then you are looked at as inherently bigoted. And why? Well, I'll tell you why. Because if you're actually a Christian, that means you put faith and stock in God's word. And what does that mean? That means you believe in biblical marriage. That means you believe in only two genders. That means you believe the husbands are the head of the household and the women support that. And you want to know why they support that? Because the husband is willing to give his life to protect her and his family. Where life starts at conception and no one can choose when it's okay to murder a child. I live in the same America that you do where... It's not all that popular to be Christian. And you're, ta- you're called a bigot because you're not inclusive enough. When they, when they create a new gender next week, we got to be able, we got to take it and figure out how to mold God's word around it. No, no, that's not the way it is. It would be easy for someone to think. It would be easy for someone to think that the Apostle Paul, when writing this, um, did not understand the type of government that we were living in. He would not understand the atrocities that are being allowed and even written into legislation for people to participate in. But remember where Paul was when he wrote this letter. Remember where he was and what type of government was in charge. During the time of this writing, the Emperor Nero was in charge. During this time period, when a massive fire, and this is just an example of of, of the type of leader he was, when a massive fire broke out, most people said he was the one that caused it, but it burnt down Rome. You know what he said? It wasn't me. It was the Christians. And you know what happened there? When When he shifted the blame to the Christian people, well, that... That caused a huge increase in Christian arrests of Christians being tortured and Christians being killed. All because he was, it was a political ploy, whatever it was, for him to burn down his own city. So yeah, Paul really knew what it was like to live under an oppressive government. And you mean after all that? 
after the fact that he and his fellow brothers and sisters, our brothers and sisters in Christ, were being killed simply for saying they were a Christian? Yeah, I think we haven't got there yet. Yet he still says in Romans 13, by the moving of the Holy Spirit, be subject to civil authority. Even though Rome was doing what it was doing. This morning, you and I have to realize that if we want to live life more like Christ, if we want to grow our faith and, and live by the Bible, then we must be subject to authority. And if you don't, well, then the Bible goes on to say in verse 2, what happens to those who have a problem with applying this the, the scripture in verse 1? Because if you reject those, if you reject those with civil authority, verse 2 simply goes right to the fact that that's the same as rejecting God. I like what Robert Piccarelli wrote about this. He says, We must demonstrate in conduct a habitual and heartfelt subjection to those who have authority over us. I don't like it, but the Bible declares it. Let's go on to verse 3. God's Word says, For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and, for, uh, and uh, thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good, but if thou do that which is evil, be for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherefore you must needs sub, uh, be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. Here's the second point the text gives us this morning. Is that those in authority, and this is the one I really, I just, I, 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 See, I push it, I push it, I prayed God give me another message because I just couldn't settle it in my heart. It's saying that the people in civil authority are by default because they have been given the power by God are subsequently servants of God. If you don't want to be at odds with authorities, then you got to do what's right. Do what's legal. That's what these verses are telling us. Now just so you know, how much uh, I attempt to practice what I preach. Uh, I think it was last week, maybe week before last, I took Riley to Tennessee. Got there, dropped her off, and I'm thinking, wow, Memorial Day weekend, it hasn't been that bad. There's been a few cops out, but I'll just, I'll make, I'll make double time back because the cops have been so low. And about 20 or 30 minutes into the trip, I'm definitely exceeding the speed, uh, exceeding the speed limit. And every time I got to one of those cross-throughs where it says authorized personnel only, I don't know, I just I felt that shot of adrenaline and, you know, that hold your breath hoping that a cop didn't catch you when they were running radar. And then God, th these words, believe it or not, because I had been studying this, these words came to mind. If you do what that which is good, you don't have to worry about authorities coming after you. So what I did, I set my cruise control at the speed limit. But I marked that down. Sister Cindy, it might snow in June. I rode the whole way home, and you know what? Every time I got to one of those cross-throughs on the interstate, I didn't, even, I didn't even care. When I saw a cop there, I just waved. <laughs> so tensing up and be, oh, no, I hope they didn't get me. Man, I hope they let me by with 10 miles per hour over. I uh, knew someone who was pretty close to me. A while back, he, uh, he went to rehab, and, and one of the things that he said was uh, the counselors there would say, you probably have a lack of respect for authority. And you probably uh, don't trust police a lot. And why? You know, they said, well, what's the root cause of that? Well, odds are if you got pulled over and you were carrying with you, if you had, if you had drugs on you, you were worried about being caught. You were, worried about, uh, you were worried about them finding you and you going to jail, you getting a fine, whatever it may be. And they said one of the things about getting clean is when you drive around from then on and you're not worried about possessing drugs or getting caught doing drugs, uh, they said there's a, there's a certain amount of relief, there's a certain amount of anxiety that goes away. Why? Because you're no longer doing what's considered illegal. 
You're not worried about an authority coming after you because you're doing that which is good. Look, I'm going to ask you a question. Because, I, I mean, I could give you a list of the reasons, uh, starting with local officials all the way to the top of the chain of the problems I have with people and civil authorities. But let me ask you guys a question. This is what, do you want to live in a place that doesn't have a police force? I don't. Uh, do you want to live in a place that doesn't have a military to protect us? I don't. Uh, do you want to live in a place that doesn't have any form of justice system? I don't, because no matter how broken or misguided you think these branches of government are, they still serve purpose. They still do deter evil people from doing even more evil things. And who, who really is a proponent of anarchy this morning? Don't raise your hand. My goodness. I don't think I would ever want to live in a society where people can do as they want, when they want, as much as they want, without any fear of human repercussions. Now, we all know that they will one day answer to God. But I don't believe in anarchy. And I don't think anybody who really thinks about it would want to live that way either, no matter how much you distrust or dislike the government. Now... Whether these people are followers of Jesus or not, you and I have to remember that God has allowed them to be in their position. He has entrusted them with the sword. That's not what I said. That's what the Bible says. He's entrusted them with the sword so that if you or if I commit evil deeds, then the authority that's been given to them is, uh, by God, they have the ability to exercise the use of that sword or rather to pass judgment. Therefore, you and I should respect authority and recognize them as servants of God. Verses 6 and 7. For this cause pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to him, or tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Here's the third thing the, point, uh, the, the text points to us, uh, or points out to us, and that is you and I as Christians are to support authority. Support the civil servants in our country. The text give us, gives us a couple of ways to do this. First, pay your taxes. That's an easy one. I love, and I hate to say it, but he's never going to watch this video, so I'm just going to pick on him. I love, when, uh, I don't want to say I love when Wesley Snipes got arrested, but I love the response that Wesley Snipes gave when he got arrested for not paying taxes. You know what he said? I know I had to. I didn't know I had to pay taxes. I, I, didn't, I never paid taxes. Nobody told me I was supposed to. Look, the, the Christian should pay taxes. Now, how is that applicable? Because all of us, I mean, after a while... Uh, the IRS will come knocking at our door. Well, here I used to be of the mindset, you know what, if there's a gray area in the tax code, then I want to exploit it. Uh, people who are wealthy do, why not me? Right? Why can't I capitalize on those, those things? And uh, for years I said that. But then I get to scriptures like these, where there should be no gray area. As a Christian, there should be no place where we have a cause for question. You are to do what's right above board 100% of the time. Because the Bible tells us not to abstain from evil. It tells us to abstain from even the appearance of evil. And that means everything because we jump to uh, 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 things like murder and adultery and all those things. And, 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 and you know, we just jump to those things. But it's something as simple as, you know what? Do your taxes right. If you can't figure them out, try to get somebody to help you do your taxes right. And make it clear with them. I don't want to try to find any loopholes. I want to pay what I owe or what the government says I owe. And be done with it. Pay your taxes. This is what we're told here to do. By the way, Jesus, um, when the Pharisees were trying to get him to speak out against Rome, uh, Jesus said the same thing when, when the Pharisees asked, Hey, should we pay taxes? In the Gospel of Matthew chapter 22, here's what Jesus said. Jesus perceived their wickedness because they were trying to set him up and said, Why tempt me, ye hypocrites? Show me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Who is the image in subscription? And they say unto him, Caesar's. 
Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. Hey, I, I think, personally, if you just want my personal opinion, now this is not biblical, I'm just letting you know. I don't want you all to say, Danny said the Bible said this. I think we're taxed too much. Our income's taxed, and when we go to buy something, it's taxed again. And after a while, you, you, they find some way to tax it even more. I think we're taxed too much. I don't like the way the government spends the money which we pay into them. Uh, I don't like paying taxes. I really don't. But I do anyway. Why? Well, first, I don't want to go to jail. Remember we talked about the whole justice system? That's where it comes back to bite me. I don't want to go to jail. But secondly, and more importantly, God's Word tells me that it's the right thing to do when respecting and paying tribute to authority. Here's the second thing it tells us to do. It tells us to fear authority. Titus chapter 3 verse 1 says this, Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work. We're also told in Romans chapter 13, to honor and respect those who are in authority over us. Look, I would be standing up here lying to you this morning if I told you that I never chuckled at a video showing how much our president says just dumb things. Now, I say dumb things, but he says dumb things. I'd be lying if I said I didn't even send some of you here this morning for those videos. All right? However, then I get to this. and I, I don't like it, but the Bible declares it. The fact is, God's Word tells us to honor and respect civil authorities. If Brother Joe did something, say he fell or he tripped or made a mistake and somebody videoed it, I know I wouldn't be sharing it. I wouldn't be passing it around. If Sister Linda fell down the stairs. I, if it was recorded, I wouldn't be laughing and sharing it. No, I'd feel for those people. Why would I do it to the person who has authority over us? And I'm not picking on you. I'm just letting you know what, how God dealt with my heart with this text. I'll never understand those people. Uh, you, uh, we all know, if you, if you like the ones that are in there now, just wait, you'll, you'll, you'll not like the next ones. Uh, I, I've never understood when the President or Congress, when they perform poorly, you have to understand, when they perform poorly, we suffer as citizens of the United States. I'll never understand the person who wants someone in office to do badly. Wishing for them to make an error. Why? So you can say, I told you so. I told you. They didn't have a D or an R beside their name. You understand, their mishaps and their mess ups hurt us. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 7, it says this Seek the peace of the city, whither I have caused you to be carried away captives, and pray unto the Lord for it. For in the peace thereof, Shall ye have peace? God's Word telling them. You know what God is telling them? The people who took you captive, you pray for those people. Pray for their peace because then you'll have peace. I read this story of, and I'll close with this. I read this story of President Jimmy Carter's daughter. I believe it was Amy. And she, she, had, this, she had this assignment come home on a Friday afternoon and it was due Monday. And... Uh, it was while her father was still in office as the president. And she was stumped by this question that uh, was involving the Industrial Revolution. And uh, she sought help. Her, her dad was busy, so uh, she didn't ask him. She sought help from her mother. And, and uh, uh, of course, the first lady, she... I didn't, uh, let me not say of course. The first lady was uh, just as perplexed by it. Uh, so in turn, they asked one of the aides that were working uh, in the office of the West Wing... Uh, they didn't know it either. So the aide said, well, let me seek clarification from the Labor Department. And a rush request was put into the Labor Department to figure out the answer to this girl's question for school. Now, there was an entire team that worked the whole weekend to get an answer to this, to this question. Now, that's scary by itself because it took a whole team of government officials to answer a question that was given in school. 
And then finally on 4 p.m. on Sunday evening, or Sunday afternoon, the president got an envelope from the Labor Department that says, responding to your rush request. And he had no clue what it was and gave the answer. Well, I'm sure the household, the, the Carter household was a little turned upside down that night because the president realized that he just paid uh, uh, someone a whole weekend for a school assignment. But then you know what happened? You got all those resources to get that answer. She turned it in Monday morning. And when the teacher gave it back, she wasn't impressed with the answer, so she got a C. All right? Now, this is the government who is the expert in what was taking place, and the teacher still gave it a C. Look, you and I may not be impressed with what the government does, nor who serves in it. But God's Word clearly declares that you can't be an awful citizen and a biblical Christian at the same time. It's counterproductive. Want to be, a more, more, want to be more in line with God's Word? Well then, when it comes to civil authorities, start by praying for them. And I mean genuinely pray for them. When you see them out and about, now odds are you're not going to run into... President Biden out in Louisa, okay? But you just might bump into Greg Strickland, who's on the school board. You just might bump into Donnie Lowe, who's the sheriff. You just might bump into Fitzgerald Barnes, who's the Patrick Henry district supervisor. You just might bump into those people, and you might say, hey, thank you for your service. Democrat, Republican, Independent, it doesn't matter. And even offer to pray for them right there. Now, you may feel awkward, and they may be taken back. You want to know why? Because nobody does it. You, know when, you want to know when those people hear, for, hear from people? When they want to complain. Make it a habit to go to God on their behalf. Now look, you can say, oh, well, Danny just misinterpreted this. No, uh, I don't know how you arrive anywhere else when you read these first seven verses of chapter 13. Once again, I don't like it, but God's Word declares it. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 says this, I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men, for kings, and, uh, and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. God's word, when I said, you know what, I was trying to find every way I could to get out of these seven verses. Because it just goes against everything that I know that our government puts forth some of the most horrific things imaginable. But the fact is, God's Word declares it, whether I like it or not. And if we're going to be faithful Christians, Bible-believing Christians, then we have to take these first, uh, these first seven verses of Romans 13 just as seriously as we do anything else. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for those who've come out to worship this morning. Father, I'm thankful for these words that I, if it didn't challenge anybody else, I know it challenged me. Father, I pray you forgive me and I say this publicly in front of this congregation. Uh, Father, forgive me for those times that I have ridiculed those in authority over me. Father, I, uh, I'm sorry for the times that I don't lift up prayers and petitions on their behalf. Father, we like to quote things like if, uh, if your people will bow down and pray that you'll heal their land. We, we love those scriptures, but we never consider all that what all that means. We never, consider, uh, we never consider that our leaders have to be a part of that. At least I don't. Father, I pray this morning that we take these verses seriously. And that we have a new perspective when it comes to those who are in office. Not that we have to like everything they do. Not that we don't even have to... Uh, not that we have to vote for them when the time comes. But Father, that we should be faithful in prayer. Faithful in support. Faithful in respect. And recognize that you have provided the way for them to be in the position they're in. Father, I thank you. I praise you and I love you. And it's in the name of Jesus I pray these things. Amen.